And our conversation with Alan Keefe from the IRMC Physician Group is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. He is a physician's assistant, and uh, he is involved in orthopedics in a big way. Alan, good morning. Good morning, Todd. How are you this morning? Wonderful. It's good to have you with us here today. Uh, thanks. All right. So we want to talk orthopedics, and particularly, and, and I say this because, you know, with this pandemic, uh, folks are getting back into exercise. That's a good, good thing. But we need to do it safely. So let's talk about that as uh, folks continue. And as uh, athletes, of course, from high schools and colleges uh, are doing their best to, to get about their sports, um, we need to talk about avoiding injury and then what to do if we actually have one. So let's start there. Avoiding sports injuries. Um, in a lot of cases, it really comes down to common sense, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think you have to have a, a starting point to whether um, – you know, you're you're coming from the couch and uh, working up to something, or even our you know our athletes now that you know may have been off for the fat past few months because of the pandemic. Um, you you kind of almost need to start from scratch and uh, work yourself back up to where you need to be. So um, you know, getting into a good program, make sure you're stretching well and and all those things, and kind of knowing your limitations uh, limitations too. Yeah, I would guess, and and it really is case specific. Uh, if you've got somebody that's been sedentary, and all of a sudden they say to themselves, "I'm going to get up and and I'm going to go run a uh, 5K," um, uh, then they've got problems. Uh, they've they've got some issues that are going to crop up, and they're going to learn pretty quickly. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, and there are programs out there, and even different, you know, the the technology we have these days with apps on the phones and those types of things that yeah you can um, you can definitely work yourself up but yeah you shouldn't expect to just go out and and start running um, because again like you said um, things will crop up and you'll be coming to see us at the at the office so. yeah um, age um, lifestyle uh, sure. previous uh, activities uh, that you that you once did that you think you can still do. Uh, let's talk about um, some, maybe have some tips about uh, what are some of the things that we could do in our everyday activities, walking uh, and, and, and running, if we do choose to run, uh, to avoid injury. Sure. I mean, you always want to um, you always want to warm up. Um, again, you never just want to, you know, walk out the door and start running. So you want to stretch well, uh, stretch your legs, stretch your, your core, um, Again, even even go for a, um, a walk and then um, I- increase it to maybe a, a brisk walk and then into into running. Um, but again, stretching is very important before you go out and start doing these things. Also, if you're going out into the the hot weather, you know you have to make sure that you're hydrated well. Whether you take water with you or um, or you know drink a lot before you go out. So yeah, give me a few tips on stretching. Because I think that is a real key to uh, avoiding injury. Yeah, I mean, definitely if you're getting into the running, jogging, those types of things, um, you want to tr- stretch the hamstring muscles. The quad, the hamstrings are in the back, the quads are in the front, your calf muscles down on the bottom. Um, a- again, um, it, uh, it's hard to, to, to illustrate on, on the radio, but um, you know, even if you Google some, some of those different stretching exercises, maybe stretch for 15 to 20 minutes or even up to a half an hour, depending on uh, your, your level of, of activity prior to getting out to doing those things, um, because that's, yeah, that's where you're going to start pulling your muscles mm-hmm. when you don't do that. What are some of the signs our bodies will give us that we've gone too far? Uh, most of the time it's pain. Um, so, um, you know, if you start having muscle aches or pain, um, you know, the other thing, again, depending on your uh, activity level, if you start becoming short of breath or out of breath, you know, you may need to cut it back. And, uh, again, maybe if you are starting over, you know, run for a little bit, then walk for a little bit, then then, then pick it back up. But, you know, normally the, the, the first uh, thing that's going to say something's wrong is is pain. Yeah, yeah. So no pain, no gain is not really true, is it? <laughs> not always, yeah. <laughs> um, if you would, um, footwear, the importance of proper footwear and taking care of your feet because they're a real key. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So, um, again, always uh, want to have good good running shoes. And, and if, you're, if you're looking into really uh, taking this seriously and getting, you know, getting into a lot of running, it probably would be worth your while 
to invest in a, a good pair of shoes. Um, and and again, I, I mean, every every person is different. So some people may have flat feet, and um, others may have high arches. So you know, sometimes people even need arch supports um, and those types of things in their shoes. But yeah, footwear is very important um, when you're getting back into or getting into working out. Alan Keith is with us. We're talking about orthopedics, and the moms and dads are sending kids back to school, and we've got the go-ahead from the PIAA for the fall sports, and so camps are getting underway. The heat acclimation camps are this week, so heat camps and then um, on to specific practices for sports. Um, and, and parents are rightly concerned uh, as their kids head off to camp, um, especially in the year 2020, in the in the year of the pandemic, that uh, things are going to go safely. Uh, what are some of the things we need to look for? Um, well, again, just uh, as you say, starting off with the heat thing, the proper hydration, and you know there should be protocols in 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 place at the different levels um, that they should be following. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking or talking more about the pandemic, I mean, just. Yeah, you know, personal hygiene and and um, you know washing your hands and and, and uh, you know you, we always talk about this social distancing. Uh oh, you there? There oh, you sorry. There sorry, you I go. got I got uh, unhooked there. Sorry, <laughs> um, this social distancing, but you know that's that's definitely going to be a, a little difficult. Um, you know when when you're talking about football and, and other sports where you're going to be right beside each other, but. Mm-hmm. But again, hygiene, cleaning your equipment, um, even when you get home, um, you know, making sure everything's washed and um, just you just can't be too careful these days. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. So, and so they'll be they'll be rightly concerned about that, and um, the schools will follow their protocols because uh, they don't want anybody coming down with anything either. So, Alan, what happens when I get hurt? You go out and you run. Uh, one of the things, you know, I've had a lot of injuries, uh, and uh, when I finally get back to running, one of the things I do is I run from telephone pole to telephone pole, and then I walk from the next telephone pole to the next one, and, then, and I alternate in that way. But sometimes you push it too far, you do get hurt. Um, at what point does it become, okay, just go home and rest it, or I need to see somebody? Yeah, I think um, I think initially, um, I guess it depends on the um, – you know, how badly it's bothering you. Know, if you're, um, you know, if, if you are in one of your jogs or sprints and if you think you push it a little bit more and you feel something pop and then you have a lot of pain, I think, yeah, you really need to back it down at that point. I, I still think, though, that some um, minor aches and pains and those types of things are kind of common when you start getting back into things that, um, you know, giving it some time and, and maybe, you know, like you said, resting it, stretching uh, when you get home, uh, ice uh, is good to uh, calm things down, uh, or even some compression with an ace wrap if you if if something's swollen. But you know, normally I tell people if things are going on for a week or two and and, and you're not doing much and they're not getting better, you know, then you might want to get in to to see us down uh, at the HMI building and we can take a peek at it and if we feel it's warranted, maybe even get an X-ray. Yeah, I want to talk about that in just a second or so, but it just you just said something that popped into my mind. Okay, so I've heard this. I don't know that I practice it as well as I should. When you're done with your workout, uh, is it a good idea to go sit down and take a rest, or should there be some sort of cool-down period, stretching period at the end of the workout? We think of it beforehand, uh, but what should we do at the end of the workout? Uh, yeah, yeah, you should cool down and you should stretch. I mean, um, actually, one of the, the, the best treatments for a, a, an injured um, muscle is actually stretching it out um, because um, you don't want it to heal in a, a contracted state because then it, it can actually, um, you can re-injure it quicker. So, you know, it is, it is good to, to warm up before, do your, um, you know, do your workout and then have a cool down and, and, and stretch well. And, and again, you're, everything's tied together as far as your, your legs into your lower back. So, you know, hamstring stretching and lower back stretching is very, very important too, because, if you're not stretching your hamstrings, a lot of times people will come in with low back pain. Um, so, but you definitely need a cool down period too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I want to get back to the HMI building because it's a pretty amazing facility. It covers any variety of treatment options uh, uh, for sports injuries, um, and and you, of course, have intimate knowledge of that. So, what will we find when we walk into the HMI building? 
Oh, yeah. Indiana is very fortunate to have a building like that. You know, it covers um, orthopedics to sports medicine, uh, rheumatology, um, pain management, physical therapy, uh, and we even have MRI um, in the building, too. So, you know, we have x-ray in our office. So, you know, it really is a one-stop shop um, for all your orthopedic um, sports medicine, rheumatology, and and pain medicine um, uh, issues. And it's very nice to have physical therapy there that if you need a brace or crutches or um, an ice wrap, you know, those types of things, we can send you right down the hall and you're walking out of the building um, with those things. Got some amazing people working there, I know, from personal experience. Where specifically do you work within the building? So I'm with the um, the Center for Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, or, or IPG Orthopedics. So yeah, when you walk into the building, just make a right, and we're right down the hallway. There you go. Just as easy as that. Phone yeah. number? Oh, geez, you're putting me on the spot. I'll put, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I've got it. It's, I uh, just... it's uh, The 1 800 number is 888 452 4762. There you go. There you go. I was See, trying to think of the private number, but we should probably stick with the uh, yeah. 1 800 number. So. Yeah, let's do that one. We don't want people calling you at home. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Keefe has been with us this morning. We've been talking about orthopedics. Boys and girls are getting out there, and uh, of all ages, you know, doesn't matter what age you are, you should do your best to keep active. I didn't ask you about uh, one area that um, that I really have an interest in, but it's just a, a developing interest because I know somebody afflicted with uh, um, rheumatism. Uh, that's that's a pretty big catch-all type of phrase, isn't it? Uh, word. It is. Um, yeah, there 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 are a lot of connective tissue um, disorders, and um, uh, yeah, and it's sometimes hard to just it, it's hard to pinpoint. Um, mm-hmm. You know what someone may have just because there are so many different, um, different diagnoses and, and problems. So, um, you know, we're fortunate to have rheumatology and, um, you know, they do see a lot of people and uh, again, it's, it's tough to live in pain. Um, but you know, we try our best to, um, you know, make it as manageable as possible for people. Absolutely. All right. Good stuff this morning from Alan Keefe, 888-452-4767. Six to the Human Motion Institute, to all of the great orthopedic services through the IRMC Physician Group. Hey, thanks for spending some time with us today. Absolutely, Todd. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And AM 1160. And AM